What's going on everybody? So back for another one and today we are talking about CO2 laser alignment. It's a tough one and it's one that people get stuck on often. So I'm going to break it into two parts. So the first part I'm going to talk about the principles behind alignment and kind of the theory of everything and then in the second part do an actual alignment. So stay tuned. So first things first, we need to jump into a little bit of terminology. So as you see here on the screen, you look at the top and you have your laser tube. And just to the left of that, you have mirror one. And then just down from there, you have mirror two. And then there in the center, you can see where the laser head is. So that is the beam path that you can see there. So just so that we all understand what is going on, tube, to laser or to mirror one and then down to mirror two and then over to mirror three that sits at the top of the laser head and then the final point of alignment is down from mirror three to the laser bed itself and through the focal lens. So the next part that we need to talk about is the mirrors and how they adjust. So as you can see here from this diagram, your mirrors come and they have kind of an L pattern with the thumb screws that you use. Um, one of the ways that I envision in my brain how this works is when you are screwing one of the thumb screws in, it is pushing the mirror away from that point. When you are unscrewing them, it is bringing the mirror back. So if you take a look at the mirror at the top left, on that bottom left thumb screw, if you screw that mirror or screw that screw in, it's actually going to point the mirror towards the right. If you unscrew it, it's going to point the mirror back to the left. And then if you go to the top screw there, if you screw in that thumb screw, it is going to point the mirror downwards. And then if you unscrew it, it's going to point the mirror upwards. And then you have your diagonal adjustment. This is one that I stay away from unless I absolutely have to because that diagonal adjustment is a combination of the two other screws. So if you screw this one in, it is going to point the mirror up and to the left. If you unscrew it, it's going to point it down to the right. And then that L pattern is, you know, however you find it, that is what it's going to do. So you just have to visualize that you are pushing the mirror away or pulling the mirror back to the point that you are screwing the thumb screw in from. So you will find the same pattern just in a different orientation at the top of your laser head. So those are things to keep in mind so that way you can keep your orientation and how you are moving your mirrors. So just as a recap, if you screw the thumb screw in, it is going to push the mirror away from the point that you are at. If you screw it or unscrew it, it's going to pull it back to the point. That All you're right. At. So now we're going to take a look at my awesome drawing skills here. So we have our laser tube, mirror one, mirror two, and then mirror three that sits at the top of the laser head and down through the focal lens. So that is our alignment or laser beam path. So something to keep in mind, first off, it is not absolutely necessary to be completely centered on mirror one or mirror two. Centering is almost, it is imperative at mirror three. And, you know, we'll get more into that and show you kind of what I mean. Um, but when we first go and we talk about this, we need to make sure that the beam is hitting the mirrors. Sometimes you'll see that you're able to hit mirror one really easy and mirror one to two is rather far off or you, almost non-existent. You don't even see it. So keep in mind that this laser beam path, they are straight lines. In a perfect world, all of these are going to be perfect 90 degree angles all the way through. This corner, 90 degrees, this corner, 90 degrees, and this corner, 90 degrees. Is that absolutely possible? No, it's impossible to be 100% perfect, but we can get pretty dang close. So something to keep in mind 
since all of these lines are perfectly straight, so coming from mirror one to mirror two, take my pencil for example, if I move this here to try and get to mirror two, even this point here, which in a laser is usually the closest point that you can get. You don't get these mirrors to absolutely touch. So even if you are moving just a little bit here, it's going to move your first point here. So what we do in alignment is we bring this mirror up here close, we will fire a pulse and then move it away and then fire another pulse. So over here, for example, let's move this over. So let's say that we fired a pulse on our closest point. So we moved the, the gantry closest to the tube, closest to mirror one. We fired a pulse and let's say that that pulse is right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move our laser head down and away from mirror two, or mirror one, move that mirror two out closer to the front, and then we fire a pulse and we find that that pulse is over here. So we've got pulse one, pulse two. So this is our close or our far pulse. So then, Looking at this, most people want to go ahead and say, hey, I need to get this to land right here. That is not going to be your aligned spot. You actually are going to end up over here somewhere. And let me explain that again. So as you go and you look at my pencil here, even moving this to get to this point out here, is moving this point here. So it is impossible to just go and move this point onto your closer pulse and make it aligned. There's going to be that magic spot that is just past where your first pulse was or where your close pulse was. So keep in mind that that is gonna be somewhere just on the other side of that close pulse. All right, so we're able to get from mirror one and mirror two. We've got those figured out, we've got them aligned, and now we're trying to get to mirror three. So one of the issues that you have with mirror three is there is a lot of travel for that. So this is the longest point to get to. So any errors we have in mirror one to two are gonna be amplified as we get to mirror three. So what we often do to do this alignment is we'll get as close as we possibly can. So you bring your laser head over here and you'll mark a pulse. So we'll get, you know, a close pulse kind of like this one over here. And then you bring your laser head all the way down to this corner over here. So that's going to be the farthest travel that you can get. And then we get another pulse like this one over here. And again, remember, you're gonna be aligned somewhere over here on this other side. So close, far, aligned. So making sure that we're not just trying to chase this second pulse or this first pulse, not trying to just automatically go and put the second pulse right on top of the first one because it, you're just gonna keep getting frustrated. So you want to realize that it will be somewhere just past that. So again, I had said that this is important to be completely centered at that third mirror. So what we do is we go ahead, we'll test here close, we test at the farthest point, and then you can also go, once you get those two, you can go and test here and here. So you've done all four corners to make sure that the alignment is good. So what you may end up finding once you get all of that aligned is that this pulse, so we'll even make a circle here. So, you know, center would be right here, but you find that your pulse is maybe a little high or a little bit to the left or somewhere else. So, but as long as your pulses are all landing on top of each other, you can leave this part alone. You can do some adjustments here at the tube. So, if we need to adjust the tube to get the alignment that we need, 
there are adjustments that can be made. You can shim the tube up or down, or you can also tilt the tube to the right, tilt the tube to the left, to try and get this spot down to where it needs to be. Once these mirrors are aligned, they're aligned. We can make further adjustments by making movements with the tube. Okay, so the final part of this whole alignment journey is here at the third mirror. So the goal, trying to get this as centered as possible at this third mirror, is because we want to have as perfect of a 90 degree angle as we can possibly get in here. So that way we're coming down through the laser tube and through the focal lens as dead center as we can possibly get. Because that is going to get us the most power down to our work bed as possible. Even being a millimeter off, even in a, you know, a half a millimeter off can cause drastic decreases in the strength of your laser beam once you hit this point. So often what I start off by doing, if I'm doing a traditional alignment and going through just using pulses, is I will remove this nozzle, take it off, make sure that the focal lens is out, and then I will put a piece of tape underneath here and then pulse down onto it. You know, make sure that you press up into the nozzle so that way you'll be able to see the impression on the tape from the nozzle or from the, the tube and then pulse down into it. This will give you an idea of how centered you are coming down the laser tube or in the actual, the, the laser head tube. So the next thing that you wanna do is once you've got this dialed in and you can see that you're very centered as you are marking on that tape, you know, using your adjustment screws and making sure that all happens, you will then put the nozzle back on and then do the same thing. Put a piece of tape over the nozzle and make sure that that pulse is coming out. One of the things that we often see is if you are not getting a perfect little circle pulse straight out of the laser head, you are getting some kind of like half moon shaped like this. It means that you're getting some kind of reflection from inside of either this tube here or the nozzle itself. And so then further alignment is needed to correct that. The way I look at this is I am able to see that there is a half moon shape. And so I want to try and pull this lens or pull, or pull this beam back this way to get it off the nozzle. So the last thing that you can do here to try and test how good of a 90 degree angle you have here at your laser head is to go ahead and put some material down on the laser bed. It could be scrap, whatever it is, and get your laser head in focus. There should be a gauge that came with your machine or something that will get you in the rough ballpark. Get that in focus and then mark a pulse down onto the material. Then what you'll wanna do is lower the laser bed and then mark a pulse again. So the goal is your first pulse should be a nice small dot. Then when you lower the laser bed far enough, you start to get a bigger dot. If you can get those to be almost perfectly centered over the top of each other, then you've really gotten a true 90 degree angle and you're able to see that that laser beam is going down in a perfect pattern. One thing to keep in mind is sometimes if this is not being done correctly or if it's not being achieved, there could be some tilt to the actual laser head. So one thing to check is that this is actually sitting at a 90 degree to the laser bed itself. So now that you've got your laser all aligned and things are looking great, make sure that you go back and you tighten all the lock nuts on all these thumb screws, on all your mirrors. Make sure that they don't move again. And be careful as you do it, hold onto the thumb screw and then tighten the nut to avoid the mirror moving if all possible. And then last thing, go through and clean everything. You've been burning up some masking tape and you've made a mess in here. So use some isopropyl alcohol, go in here and clean up mirror one, mirror two, mirror three, and then also the focal lens. Make sure that it is installed correctly 
It should be installed belly up and just like that inside of the laser head. So the beam is actually being received by the belly up side of the lens. All right, everybody. So we've covered a lot of information there and I hope that it made sense. Um, as you get your hands on things, it will start to make more and more sense and then you'll become a master of laser alignment. So on the next video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through and do an alignment together. I'm also going to use a tool that I like. It's called the Reverse Alignment Tool from American Photonics. And it's one that really helps to dial in that angle at the laser head to make sure that it's perfect. And so you use a combination of the, the Reverse Alignment Tool and traditional methods to get both the tube and the laser head aligned in a perfect alignment back from the laser head, if that makes sense. Lots of words. But thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, and stay on for the next one. And then take a look at everything else that I've got going on. Honestly, try to be as super helpful as I can and provide the best content to help you on your laser journey. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.